Tuareg Movie Recaps Our story begins in a picturesque rural village in Thailand. It is a time of celebration and the young people of the village are participating in different competitions to show who is the strongest and fastest. Here we meet Ting, our protagonist, who demonstrates his great speed and intelligence, reaching a flag at the top of a tree before the other young people of the village. Tinges is honored as the winner of the upcoming celebrations and is recognized in front of Hongbok. An ancient statue of Buddha venerated by the villagers as a sacred object of high religious value. King, who is a talented apprentice of the discipline of Muay Thai, practices constantly day and night in search of recognition from his master, who due to previous tragedies had become a drunk with wisdom and tried to instruct Tin Ilk on the dangers of use your skills on other people. He confesses to her that many years ago he took a person's life. By using his talents without caution and this fact has tormented him all his life. The boy accepts the advice of his teacher and retires to rest. The Lord, on the other hand, goes to the temple to pray to Urbact for peace of mind. Upon reaching the temple and crossing the doors he is hit from behind by Don, a relics dealer who works under the orders of Conchuan. Who will we meet later? Don, along with his henchmen, arrived at the village hours before and planned to steal the sacred statue. To sell it on the black market. However, when the master awakens to notice that Hongbao had been decapitated and her head had disappeared, the monks, faced with the horrible fact, reveal that the village would be plunged into misery and disappearance if the statue was not complete. By the time of the ceremony, Tinge who had deep respect for the statue. He soon offered to recover what had been taken from them, promising to go to the city and return the missing piece before the ceremony. Later, the protagonist is visited by the village monk, who gives him an ancient herb that would help him in a moment of great danger. He motivates him with wise words and blesses his path and thus begins Ting's journey, who before leaving is approached by the villagers, who give him different items and some money to help him in his crusade. One of these items was a letter with the name and address of a person who could guide him when he arrived in the city. That person was the son of one of the villagers. After this we meet Jumla, a young rebellious and gambler who owed money to all of Bangkok and stood out in orchestrating scams in street races with his very lighting partner. He arrives in the city and when he meets Julie, she approaches him calling him brother and son of a nun Paradu, the name of the village, something that Jumla does not like, who is ashamed of his origins and pushes you away, telling you to leave. Nevertheless, when you push him, his bag falls to the ground, revealing the money that his people had given him to help him. Seeing this, Joomla changes his attitude and invites you to come to his house and after a few minutes he manages to make you he doesn't care and ends up stealing his money and running away. Fake it, he chases and finds his motorcycle, on the outskirts of a clandestine fighting place only, which he had already bet on. The money is found in front of a furious team who demands him for what he did in an attempt to recover his money from the betting master. He gets involved in the fight. It is here where we learn about the boy's fighting skills, when with just one perfect kick he manages to defeat the champion of the night. While this is happening, we meet Conchuan, the leader of a trafficking gang, who enjoys watching fights and making a lot of money. Don, the head thief, appears in front of him and offers him the relic, but with Tuam he rejects it, saying that he has too many and it is of no value to him. On the other hand, Tinge recovers his money multiplied by his victory. And after that he attends a temple to ask the Buddha for guidance in his search. Upon returning from the temple she finds very light in an alley, being attacked by some criminals who sought to hurt only due to her debts using her great abilities. Defeating the ruffians in just a couple of moves, Jumla thanks him for his help and they walk together through the streets only to find that the ruffians had returned with many more of the gang. Tin Ilk has no choice but to flee, but in pursuit we witness great kicking movements. And jumps that show his great physical condition. On the contrary, Jungle is beaten multiple times and his bad luck is represented in moments of humor in his desire to escape from the ruffians. After a series of very elaborate scenes where we see adding, mastering his escape with great skill, 
Junling finds himself trapped and begs for help in that, the protagonist appears and offers to help him in exchange for his support in his search for the stolen piece, to which Yung Li accepts and tells him about Don who used the underground fight club. As a base of operations, this is how Tinge returns to the club in search of answers, but all he finds is excessive violence. The champion of the night is the great American bear, a huge fighter, of great brutality who does not care about the integrity of his opponents, so he is offended by his attitude, he decides to face him, starting another exciting fight as the first move. He lands a kick to the giant's face and knocks him down immediately. Leaving the crowd speechless, however, the large bear rises and puts up more of a fight, but again and again your movements target the man's weak points, until a double elbow movement defeats him. The atmosphere of the club is one of complete euphoria, while Conchuan, on the other hand, is upset by the defeat of his champion, so he sent his henchman to threaten you with a gun, forcing him to fight again. At that moment we meet Toshiro. A master of martial arts and agility who hits Tinge on several occasions with large bursts of kicks, but after an agile movement with his knee, the boy defeats him, obtaining his second victory of the night. The third fight is against the Mad Dog, a corrupt and cheating fighter who attacks Tin Ilk with a bottle in an attempt to seriously injure him. However, he throws him towards the tables with a big kick. However, his opponent takes charge of attacking him. With all the objects he can find, the fight continues throughout the bar and ends up reaching Conchuan's office, where our hero and the villain exchange glances. Tinge executes a final attack on Mad Dog throwing him out of a window and falling into a shower of glass. Numbers Pride for You stood out once again and how they act now was intrigued by this new warrior with the strength of 100 men. The next morning we see that Jumla was happy thanks to the money he amassed the night before and with a new perspective, he reads the letter that his father sent him, here we learn a little about the story of Jumla, who fled the village after going against his father's wish to become a monk. In the letter, the man expresses that there are no hard feelings and that they just want to see him one more time. Because of this, Anli decides to support you in his crusade, so he takes the NGO Bok thief's condom. There, the protagonist surprises Don in his house and after preventing him from fleeing, interrogates him, but Don treacherously attacks him and manages to escape through a window, leading to an amazing chase on motorcycles, but not the motorcycles you think of, but rather motorcycle taxis. While Don flees, his henchmen appear and a chase begins in which we see our hero jump from one motorcycle to another, dodging the ruffians and getting closer and closer to Don who is heading towards the docks. The villain throws his motorcycle and falls with your daughter into the sea, where the latter discovers Don's gold mine, dozens and dozens of stolen statues hidden under the water. In the next scene, Tingle tells the police about the statues, so they are confiscated. Something that Conchuan is not happy about, since they were his from the beginning. Because of this, Julie and Piers are kidnapped by members of the Mafia and brought to Conceptuan who, despite not killing them, offers them a deal. One last encounter between you and a mysterious fighter on the border where there are no laws. However, there is only one condition. Sidon wants to recover the missing piece, he must lose the fight then Jumla tells you and he accepts without hesitation. He is willing to risk his life for the hope of his people. The fight begins and we meet the Burmese tiger, Van Gogh's greatest fighter and a member of Conchuan's family. He was also an expert in Muay Thai, which allowed him to know Tig's movements and be a contender like none of the previous ones. With Tom he was confident with his absolute victory, he had provided his man with drugs to boost his performance and had ordered him to kill you in the name of his revenge. This is how the combat begins. And we see how your confidence collapses as you see that his strongest movements will have no effect on the Burmese tiger. Contrary to this, the tiger's blows did great damage to the boy, who was defeated and humiliated in the fight. Joomla tries to stop the fight, but he can't, so Tim is injured. After this he meets with Conceptuan, who reveals that he only used them to recover the money he had lost for the seized statues. And he further reveals to them that not only did he not plan to return the peace, but he would kill them for the problems they had caused. After this, 
They are taken to a remote place where they manage to escape and provide us with even more epic fights and accurate blows, defeating all the ruffians, except Don, who tries to escape on a motorcycle, but received a flying knee from Tig, which leaves him badly injured. At that, the protagonist interrogates him and Don reveals that Conchuan's secret lair is in the mountains. At that, the boy says goodbye to Humble, but he doesn't let him leave alone, so he joins him on a last crusade towards the mountains to recover the missing piece. The couple of sons from Number To Do steal a motorcycle and reach the base of the mountain after managing to infiltrate the lair, they are discovered and find themselves having to fight for their lives. Kam Tuan appears in the cave with the Burmese tiger and HMHD, who had been seriously injured and is used as bait to lure Ting Yes. At that moment, when the revenge begins for the protagonist, who, using the ancient herb granted by the monk, ends up defeating the tiger after a fairly close fight. When the tiger is defeated in an act of fury, he injects himself with multiple doses of the drug that Compton provided him. And transforming into a being full of anger and brute force, attacking you with great blows and kicks, taking him by the neck to the point of almost killing him almost on the brink of death. His life passes through his eyes and these moments of happiness give him the strength he needed to turn the fight around and hit the tiger with his elbows directly on the head repeatedly, managing to defeat him as he approached him. Shoot in the shoulder, but before shooting. Once again online, he attacks him with a stick, disarming him, however he draws the attention of the tiger, who was in a state of unconscious anger and attacks him mercilessly. He managed to finish him off by climbing a ledge and launching himself into the air, landing with his knees on the tiger's chest and destroying everything around him. This causes the structure of the place to collapse, dropping the head of the giant Buddha on all of them. When the dust dissipates, we see Julie who rescued the piece. But he ended up seriously injured and facing his possible death he tells you to deliver a last message of repentance to his parents. The day of the celebration arrives and we see the statue restored, as well as the hope of the people of Number Paradu, an elephant approaches and a ting dressed as a monk approaches the village, he decided to adopt the clothing in honor of Jungla, it is the brave man who gave his life for the faith of his village. We begin with a dramatic horse chase, where we see a soldier fleeing with a child, while the enemy soldiers get closer and closer. The fog dissipates and his arrows become more accurate, grazing him and forcing him to throw the boy into the bushes to try to attract the enemies. But he quickly discovers that a group of enemies were waiting for him in a clearing. Later, the soldier received a shower of arrows and died from his wounds. Like his horse, the bandit leader, disappointed at not being able to interrogate the soldier, orders his men to look for the boy, but they fail in his mission. Several days have passed and the young man is weak and tired. Along the road, a slave trader notices him and takes him to the nearby town to sell him for profit. Upon arriving at the town we are presented with the harsh and sad reality to which people are subjected in this era, both young and old are abused. And sold like cattle for the selfish purposes of people with more money. In this we meet the face of you and our protagonist, who looks tired, but still he manages to defend himself and deliver some blows to his captors. After biting the gang leader, he is thrown to the ground and his fate is decided. The merchant has sold him for the show, so his body is covered in blood and he is thrown into a pond with a crocodile, while the young man fights for his life. We see several men exchange glances as a sign of conspiracy. One of these attacks a guard and strips him of his spear. In an instant the red and crosses the merchant in the chest. While this is happening, his companions murder the slavers and a battle begins in which we see how these bandits master various fighting techniques and explosives. The leader of the rebels throws a dagger at our young man and watches him fight the crocodile while his allies kill all the remaining enemies after a few minutes. We see how the crocodile's body comes to the surface and the dagger lodges in his chest. Our protagonist is unharmed and the bandits watch him with a smile. After this, the boy wakes up in a cabin where he meets the man with the dagger. His name is Karna and the leader of a multidisciplinary martial arts band, who offers to adopt him as his son and train him in martial arts. After this, 
the young man tours the village and is amazed by the skills of the inhabitants, who train day and night for combat. For years, the young man has been trained and learns the art of multidisciplinary combat. However, in order to participate in his brother's missions he must pass several tests. The first of them is to tame an elephant, an animal revered and considered sacred with great skill, he manages to avoid the younger elephants and climbs on the back of the leader of the pack, known as the Black Tusk. Then he must face each of his previous masters in combat, starting with the village samurai, who attacks on different occasions. Our protagonist uses his knowledge and applying a trick from his teacher, Chernus manages to place the katana on his opponent's neck, obtaining immediate victory. His next opponent is a kung fu fighter and during the fight we see various fighting styles inspired by animals such as the monkey, the crane and the snake. Whoever masters these styles and using that of the mantis, manages to put a hold on him and defeat his opponent. His last opponent is a Muay Thai master, a huge man who gives him a lot of problems, including his elbows. His main weapon in this discipline seems to have no effect on the giant. He is forced to take him down by attacking his legs and pinning him until he fractures his arm, forcing him to surrender. The final test is for the mind, the protagonist walks through a dark cave where he hears sobs and cries. Shortly after, he finds a young woman who asks him for help and he offers it to her, but after a moment of kindness, the woman, who has great fighting skills, acts like a bloodthirsty beast and is attacked. His fighting style resembles that of a jaguar. Chernus observes everything from above, so he tells you that his life is in his hands, just like the day of the confrontation with the crocodile and tells him that a true leader knows when to forgive and when to take a line. Life Chung throws a dagger into the woman's hands and she mercilessly attacks our hero, who in one quick movement snatches it from her and places it on her neck. The woman has a moment to decide whether to surrender or fight and after growling at whoever cuts her throat, ending the test, Chern reveals to her that due to his great skills and for having tamed Black Fong, he will be named leader of the bandits and it is granted to him by the sacred dagger. Later we witnessed a series of coordinated attacks by Haven. To steal merchandise and mature as a murderer. While this happens, we learn a little about the protagonist's past where they reveal his true origins. It turns out that he is the son of a great military commander who, due to the great difficulties that the capital is going through, decides to leave him in a distant dance academy to protect his safety. Here he meets an orphan girl named Pim, they become great friends and share adventures, they spend a lot of time together. Which lessens the situation for those who find it difficult to understand his father's decision and why he abandoned him there. We return to the adult with whom his perfected skills decide to initiate his revenge on those who caused him so much harm. First on his list is the slaver who threw him to the crocodile. He managed to survive the attack by the bandits and now has a new camp. The young man disguises himself as a slave and while the slaver beats a woman, he throws a pot at her. And he lures him away from his men where, using drunken style, he knocks him out with a throat attack and then defeats his men one by one using his legs in a mix of capoeira and muay thai. Our hero advances, defeating dozens of slavers and then throwing the foreman into a boiling pot. Just then, the bandits appear and subdue the rest. Their leader begs him for mercy in time, offering him land and money, but the boy responds with the same sentence that he suffered years ago. He throws it to the crocodiles after his victory. We see you in front of a bonfire remembering the last time you saw Pim Wan Falls, one of his father's men appeared at the academy and took him away under a lie, fortunately surprised by another soldier, who saves, takes care of the traitor. The boy flees on a horse to his home, but when he arrives everything is on fire and he watches as his mother is killed by an arrow and his father falls under the Persian sword of a mysterious warrior. Seeing this, the young man screams and is discovered by the enemy military commander. At that moment the soldier who saved him from the traitor appears and they both flee on horseback connecting Tien's story with the beginning of the story back with the adult Tien we see him use his mentor's dagger to cut his hand and pronounce a silent oath of revenge. 
Chernus appears and tells him that the day he met him and there was a fire in his eyes, that fire is of revenge and until it burns out he will not be able to be the king of the bandits. So he has part in seeking revenge and then riding. For days he realizes that the man who murdered his family has declared himself monarch of the province and has begun a celebration for his elevation. After a speech. The celebration begins and we see a beautiful woman dancing, who surprisingly turns out to be Pi, who seems to have the attention of the new monarch. In the next entertainment act, a costumed man goes on stage to the rhythm of the drums, showing great skill. Physics and elaborate maneuvers, the pace rises and just when the monarch is distracted by Pin's beauty, the man, who turns out to be the one who throws bombs into the fire and begins his attack, the public flees and after a great maneuver, our hero arrives up to the monarch and stabs him. But this one doesn't seem to show any major signs of pain. At that point he reveals his identity to her and attacks him on several occasions. Unfortunately, the monarch has strong armor and the edge of his sword cannot pierce it. Who continues attacking and more men appear, forcing him to use explosives to escape. One of the king's men finds the dagger on the ground and recognizes its origin, linking our hero to the Charnwood bandits. Certain that he has accomplished his revenge, the boy returns to the village, but he finds it empty and a murderer is waiting for him. The combat begins and the skills of our protagonist exceed those of the assassin and with an agile movement he manages to defeat him. Then he realizes that he is being watched and more assassins appear, starting an extensive combat where we see the multiple disciplines that he learned during his life. He uses Muay Thai to defeat Kung Fu and vice versa. However, he is attacked by surprise by an assassin with a katana and is seriously injured. Despite this, he takes into account the strength to continue fighting and manages to show his skill with each weapon that he takes from the fallen assassins just before being defeated due to his injuries. Black Tusk appears and since it is a sacred animal, the killers do not dare to attack it, giving you the seconds necessary to catch your breath and seek refuge on the elephant's back. However, a new crow-like warrior appears and throws, tends to the elephant, resuming the fight. The monarch and his men appear for what you have. He realizes that he failed to murder him, and is accompanied by Sherug and is revealed to be his adoptive father. Inventor is the mysterious murderer who killed his father all those years ago, a pact he had made for the right to live in peace with his bandits. A last fight begins and with great pain Chernus attacks his son, who defends himself, but due to his injuries he is no match for his adoptive father. During the fight, Cheng shows remorse and ends up offering his life in exchange for his father's. Chernus dies next to his son, who is condemned to suffer a series of tortures until the last of his days. The monarch laughs and shows pride at having conquered his enemies. While there he cries inconsolably for the death of the only man who rescued him from certain death and gave him his love and affection while he was growing up. We begin this story with some moments from the previous installment that allow us to see the events that have occurred up to the present, where our protagonist is presented with his hands and feet subdued and who has been sentenced to suffer thirty beatings until he dies. For this reason, a dozen men enter the circle armed with canes and begin to brutally beat our hero, who receives each blow with great pain until he collapses. The monarch orders his men to continue until they kill him. To which Tien responds with fury by freeing himself from his chains and using them as weapons to fight for hours as night falls, the man's strength runs out and he ends up being brutally beaten until he faints. After this, the soldiers, who follow the monarch's orders, continue with the torture. While this is happening, we travel to the old pine village and can notice that the villagers are suffering from a rare illness that they associate with a curse. This disease causes them to have strange visions. And they suffer from severe pain, so the village monk immerses himself in deep meditation in search of the cause. At that moment we travel to a dark cave where the culprit of this curse is located and we can notice that it is the raven back. It contains, we see him suffer painful torture, so he sees his life flash before his eyes while he is tortured, he remembers the moments he lived with Pim and his deceased parents at night we get to know a little more about the monarch, 
who is tormented by voices and shadows sent by the raven warrior as punishment. For having poisoned his former king, he is deeply affected by the visions and dreams he is experiencing upon waking up from his nightmare. He hears battle cries outside the castle and is surprised to see that the bandits are attacking his forces in an attempt to free them. The raven warrior appears again, easily defeating the bandits and frustrating the attempt to save our hero. After this, the monarch offers him gold to join his forces, but the raven rejects his offer. And he reveals to her that he knows of his curse and the visions that torment him tell him that they will not stop until they consume his soul and his body. The frightened monarch orders him to reveal the cause, to which he tells him that he must accompany him, since only he is capable of freeing him from his suffering. The man is severely affected by the raven's words. Meanwhile, his men imprison the remaining bandits, but it is not enough for him, so he orders that he be beheaded at dawn. Back in the village we see Pin along with other villagers read the news of the future death of they have a sign and quickly attend the execution hoping for a miracle. Meanwhile, the soldiers prepare to execute the protagonist by order of the monarch, but just before the sentence was carried out, two horsemen appear carrying a royal message ordering the release of something that severely bothered the monarch, who at that moment suffers. New visions and ends up murdering one of his faithful advisors. After this, you are taken to Pim's village, where the best doctors are gathered in search of fighting the strange disease that affects the villagers and just when you recognize that they have the stretcher, a series of explosions and some robed killers are unleashed. Black women appear to kill the royal messengers and their men. After an impressive battle, both the leader of the assassins and the leader of the messengers die without revealing the secret of the importance of time for the kingdom. Later, Prima goes to the village monk, who reveals to her that their injuries are very serious and that their fate is in the hands of a greater force. This is how an ancient ritual begins in which a statue of Buddha is built and through meditation and ancient Thai medicine they are reborn once again through the beliefs of the village. Meanwhile, in the castle, the monarch suffers more and more from the visions and nightmares that the protagonist constantly tortures him. On the other hand, despite having woken up, he is in an almost paraplegic state. His bones were broken in so many places that he can barely get up and the frustration ends up affecting his mind, which plunges him into a deep depression. When night comes, using a cane, he manages to approach the statue built in his name and looks at it with disdain and then climbs a cliff with the intention of jumping into the void, but is interrupted by the village madman, who mocks him by offering to jump together. To then hear the voice of the monk, who watches him carefully from behind, after the monk showed him that it was not the end of his life. He is in search of enlightenment and finds himself in a cave where through meditation he manages to heal his body and find the inner light that saves him and gives him a new purpose. Some time later, the light of the sun begins to appear illuminating the forest and we see a reborn guy practicing the dance with Pin, showing us that he has recovered much of his ability. But there is still a long way to go. Later that day, he appears before the monk to thank him for saving his life that night on the cliff and he reveals to him that it was he himself who had convinced himself to continue fighting and that his mind had already begun the enlightenment process, thus that he had to complete it to regain his full strength. For months we watch you train his mind and his body to the point where the ancient warrior that lived in him is reborn and ready to complete his revenge against the monarch who, due to strong visions and torments, had no choice but to attend the raven's castle to free himself from the curse. However, while there he discovers that the raven is the one who has been tormenting him, so he orders his men to kill him. The raven uses a supernatural force. He ends up murdering both his men and the monarch, in an impressive flying movement. The monarch's head falls to the ground and during his last seconds of life he cursed the raven in the same way that he was cursed. Years ago, under the orders of the new king, Pim's village is attacked and armed men go to the forest in search of time to kill him. But he has a new strength and ends up easily defeating his enemies. Upon returning to the village he notices the destruction and surprises the soldiers looting the area, so he fights them until he defeats them. After this, Tien receives the monk's blessing and with new strength goes to the castle to rescue the survivors, 
who are being tortured and forced to work on the construction of a new giant statue for the raven, the soldiers use Black Fong to drag large rocks, but he rebels and ends up being hurt and tortured to almost death by the guards. Next, whoever arrives at the castle and challenges the raven. Who, in a display of his power, invokes an eclipse, one of the events most feared by Thai culture, and knowing the importance of Pin for our hero, ends up cutting her throat in front of her eyes, causing the feeling of revenge to return to Tien, unleashing his anger. On the men who are under the raven's curse, not only knocking them out, but also killing them one by one with the help of the elephants in an erratic attack and guided only by their bloodlust, until the raven throws a spear and pierces the protagonist directly in the chest. Telling him that as long as his heart harbors a feeling of hatred and revenge, he will be stronger and will never be defeated. It is here that we realize that everything was a simulation by Tien, who had reached a higher mental level due to meditation and could foresee what the result of his attack would be if the thirst for revenge continued to dominate his destiny. Now, with a new way of seeing the combat, he finds himself calm on a rock and after throwing the staff that the monk gave him, a shower of lightning is invoked. One of these directly hits the raven and throws him into the air, breaking the spell and returning the light of the sun after being struck by lightning. The raven gets up and notices that the marks on his body that gave him his evil powers have disappeared and now he must face you using only his strength. The combat begins in a completely calm Tien, free of anger, attacks with fluid and effective movements, managing to easily defeat his enemy in the face of his inevitable defeat, the crow throws a spear at him. But he has the catch with his hands and after several coordinated blows he ends up throwing the raven off a ledge to fall on Black Fong and end up being impaled by one of his fangs. After this confrontation, our hero returns to the village with Pin and the survivors, where they pay tribute to the ONG box statue and prepare for a new beginning free of darkness. In the last scene we see the survivors together with Teeny P.I.B., rebuilding the village and forging a new beginning and enjoying life in peace and that's how this saga ends. Subscribe turn on notifications and thanks for watching.